Ladies and gentlemen, we have the S8 Plus in for a full one year later review. Now this has gone through a lot over the past year. We're talking backpacks, airplanes, different countries, Narnia, the whole lot, all right? So to start this review off, let's get over the entire body. Let's see how it's physically been over the past year. Over the past like 12 months, I've kept this tablet in this portfolio case the whole time. So I've got this link down below, but there is a major problem. Not with the tablet, with the case. And I am just starting with the case right now. This case has been replaced. If you notice, it's fresh, okay? It's literally a new case. Mid last year, the previous case I had ended up going bad. The hinge would no longer be stable, the flap would go out and the tablet would fall. That is the only case with an actual mouse pad on the keyboard. This one doesn't have a mouse pad and I really, really miss the mouse pad. So because I didn't want to go through the same issue again of having the hinge go loose, I went with with this one that is much more magnetic powered but that's something you're going to want to keep in mind and something I'm going to talk about later in this video. Putting this aside, the tablet, however, has almost no damage anywhere on the body. Now, if we look at the aluminum on the back, there's minimal signs of use. It still looks absolutely fabulous. The screen also has no issues at all and I have not been using any kind of screen protector with the S Pen and I have been using the S Pen a lot. And honestly, over the past year, I have also not replaced the S Pen nib. So it's the nib that came on the first go and I haven't had any issues with the reception, with the connection, no problems at all when it comes to the S Pen or the nibs or the display and screen quality. There's no cracks, no shattering. And I'm a pretty hard writer, but it's been pretty awesome the whole year. I just wanna make a little point, it's important to note that with this tablet, I've been using the Samsung Notes app, which is leagues better than Apple Notes. And it's been absolutely perfect for me and my needs, and it's free. The S Pen is super responsive, and if you watched my last week's video on the $500 iPad Pro, I am much happier with the S Pen connection and the Samsung Notes app, and the whole package of note taking on this tablet than I am with the $500 iPad Pro. So to round up the physical body of the tablet, the S Pen, no damage here. It, it's in perfect condition. The nibs I haven't had to replace and there's no issue with reception on the display of this device. The display, it's gorgeous. We're gonna talk a little bit more about the display later, but as far as the build quality of the display, there have been no issues. There's no deep indents or any kind of scratching from my writing over the whole year. Plus, I've been pretty hard with it. You know, backpacks, again, we went to Narnia and, and that's a whole story for later, but for the most part, it's been in the uh, case, the portfolio case or the keyboard case. And so around the body of the display, there's also very little damage. You're gonna see that it's, the aluminum is almost as good as new. There are a little bit, you know, a few blemishes here and there. Um, I'm not even sure if the top view camera is gonna be able to pick up any of them because they're so small. It's very tiny. So it's nothing that's going to be a deal breaker overall. The tablet is very light, but that's a good thing because the build quality is also top notch. I'm all for lighter tablets as long as the build quality is up there and it's definitely up there with this tablet. Honestly, the worst part about the whole experience has been, as far as the body is concerned, the tablet cases. You know, the last one giving out and the new one that's like put me down $300, $400. That's just not cool. Now, before we get into the battery and the camera and the apps, Make sure to smash that subscribe button because it really helps grow a small channel like this one. And if you're enjoying this video, go ahead and hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section below how I can improve. I really take all your feedback in personally. It's personal. I got a bad feeling about this. And I will reflect it in the next video, okay? With that being said, let's keep it moving. I am excited to partner with today's sponsor of this video, Aura. Aura is an easy to use app that includes everything you need to stay safe online. Aura protects you from scammers and hackers by scanning the entire dark web, every corner of it where scammers are selling your personal information. And if they find anything, they'll alert you immediately. But it's not just alerts. They also send in requests to get your information removed from these spam servers so that you get less robocalls, less spam emails, and scammers have less access to your personal information. Aura also gives you real-time alerts on suspicious 
credit inquiries, like if someone's opening a loan or bank account in your name. But there's more. Aura also includes a full VPN in this package that allows you to browse anonymously online and it keeps your personal information and browsing history private. There's more because they also protect your devices from spyware, malware, and all kinds of viruses. So protect all of your devices. And they also have another cool feature which lets you keep all your passwords in one place so that you don't need to keep it all in your head or try multiple different times. Maybe you already have apps that do one of these things but Aura is able to bring all of it into one app and one package. Let Aura do all the hard work of keeping you safe online and if you sign up right now, like right now, you have the QR code, the link is right here, aura.com slash chilledfossil, you get two weeks for free, completely free. Try out all the features, check out where your information has been online and you really get a gist of how much you need Aura. Once again, I want to thank Aura for the sponsorship and for giving you guys an opportunity to try it out for two weeks free. On with the video. Now let's talk about some of my favorite apps on the S8 Plus and I'm going to start with going here. We're going to talk about some of the productivity apps because that's what I've been doing the most on this tablet. And let's start with Notion because this is the thing that I'm doing all of my notes in. So when it comes to note taking, primarily what my method looks like, I have Samsung Notes and when I'm on Android tablets, I only use Samsung Notes. When I'm on Apple tablets, like the iPad, I'm using Notability. But on Samsung, there's no point in using notability so Samsung notes is perfect I take all my notes on Samsung notes and then I can easily import them into my notion to organize where all of my notes are so it's a really easy system I have going there and that's obviously college classes things like that I'm also using Google Docs so typing up different things and I'm a canvas student so I have my canvas I, I don't think I, I still can't show you but um, all of my classes all of my courses are on canvas and I'm using the canvas app it's just so big i'm also using todoist todoist is a reminder it's a task manager it's like that so whenever i think of an idea whenever i have an idea for a thumbnail or for a video whatever it might be i put it into todoist i have it on my tablet i also have it on my phone i've got it everywhere it's a really quick convenient app to do offloading things off your mind so that you can go back to it later like the famous quote goes your brain is not for holding ideas is for coming up with new ones. So Todoist is where I dump all of the thoughts I have so that I can go back to them later and not forget. Aside from that, I'm also obviously using quite a few widgets that you're gonna see here. These are ones that I also use on my phone as well. We're using the Google clock and I'm using the two Google clocks here as well. Google search bar, this is the notes so it goes directly to my notes. It's a Notion widget as well. Also, one of the cool things about this tablet, there have been so many updates that like customizing the text on the cover or the lock screen and your icons is super awesome and it's very customizable so I really enjoy that about this tablet how customizable it really is and these six apps are the apps I use the most so hopefully that gives you a good idea of exactly what my workflow has looked like over the past year obviously I have YouTube as well and Instagram and YouTube studio and Google Maps and Twitter I mean all of those run with no problems at all I haven't been using flex or no Dex obviously and I didn't really show that to you guys because I'm not really using it I've been using it tablet mode Android tablet with these six apps primarily because my main usage for this app or for this tablet is as a student in college so I haven't really needed to do anything beyond that now there is no complete review of the s8 plus without talking about Samsung Dex which is what I have open right now. Samsung DeX, I have to say, is the ultimate multitasking feature on any tablet. Now, tablets like the Surface line, those are built productivity tablets. But as far as a feature is concerned to enhance productivity, there is nothing quite like Samsung DeX. First of all, with my usage, this is what it's gonna look like on the daily, um, in the apps, all the apps, all the different apps you can run. Uh, I go ahead and open Chrome. So I'm gonna have Chrome open generally in the corner. I'm also on YouTube a lot, so I'm gonna go ahead and have YouTube open. And YouTube's gonna open there. And now I'm also gonna add my note taking. So this is generally the workflow, and I have Notion open. So this is generally what my workflow is gonna look like. I have Chrome tabs open that are running. There might be some sort of uh, research going on in that corner. 
I'm also taking notes based on what I'm reading. Wow, that took a minute. On the Notion tab, so I've got all of my notes being done here. And then YouTube is open as a sort of entertainment. You know, it might be some background music or something like that. Now, one thing to note is when I am using Dex, I'm almost always using the keyboard as well. So I'm not typing or writing or using the S Pen at all in Dex mode. It's almost always with the keyboard connected to the actual tablet and I also have to say seldom used Dex over the past year. Dex isn't really a feature that I've been using too much. I have a dedicated $700 PC. I've got a MacBook Pro. So my point is that when you have these other peripheries that already do that multitasking so much better, right? Like a regular dedicated PC, this is definitely not going to be able to replace those things. And so for me, the real value of Dex is basically in those pinches, in those tight moments where, you know, you wish you had your tablet or your computer or PC, but you don't. Um, that's where Dex is gonna come in handy. If you are thinking about power using this tablet with Dex, I would reconsider. I would really look at where the limitations lie, which we're gonna talk about in just a minute, but I would reconsider if you're really a power user and you're thinking that Dex is gonna take care of everything. It might not. Most of the time on this tablet is probably going to be spent not in Dex mode. It's probably going to be spent in the regular Android tablet experience. And if that's something you can't live with and you're like, no, it's gotta be in Dex, you might wanna look elsewhere. Okay, so it's been fantastic for productivity and has held up well over the past year, physically. But what about the battery? No issues on this front, people. The battery is still great, and that means it can hold a charge just like it did day one. It'll easily get me through the day, whether it's in college, on college campus, or a flight from New York to Toronto, about five hours, you know, in and out of the gates. The productivity with this tablet is on fleek, but my point is the tablet's battery has served me really well. The tablet's camera is also satisfactory and I've also used them a lot less. I mean, there's some occasional Zoom calls where I needed to turn my camera on, you know, it went on with no issues and the camera itself is just fine. It's not insanely good, but that's okay. I don't need my pores in 4K, but that's it. That's where the good things end, okay? That's where the wild things end. What are some of the downsides? Well, you're going to want to consider I paid almost 1200 USD for this tablet over the past year. That includes not just the tablet, which I bought new, but also two keyboard cases, which has put me down like 350 or $400. And I needed to buy the charging brick and the charging cable because that didn't come with the box. In addition, while I really enjoy this longer design for note taking, since it's very true to paper size, when you're watching YouTube videos, you do get some pretty thick black bars on both sides. That's also me, fam. You see, that's like, yeah. Yeah, it's a different different channel, but that's me too, fam. Yeah. But anyways, as you can see, two black bars on the top and bottom. It's not as bad as the bars on the iPad Pro, but I mean, they were just so close. They were so close to a perfectly 16 by nine, but they just opted for a little bit longer. So there's a positive there when it comes to note taking and writing things down because you get more scrolling, but there's a downside and that is going to be when you're viewing media. But I think at this point, most people are used to really weird form factors, like really long and narrow devices. So I don't know, for you guys, it might not be a problem at all. And talking about the display, I already said this, this display is absolutely gorgeous. It's an OLED panel because it's the S8 Plus. Now, if you go down to the S8, you're gonna be dealing with, let's not talk about it, okay? Let's keep it OLED, all right? The panel itself has been vibrant and beautiful the entire time of the year. And um, I still think it's going to last me quite a bit longer. But let's talk about the power users now. If you're looking to push productivity with specific apps, for like artists or if you're computer science majors or software developers, you may want a more specialized tablet. Listen, the Android ecosystem for tablets is low on the list when compared to other models, but the DeX feature really does elevate and cover up the shortcomings of the Android ecosystem on a tablet. But you are still limited by the apps and the fact that even though you can run multiple apps on one window via DeX, they're not gonna be super smooth. 
they're not going to be optimized to run for DEX. Developers aren't making these apps with DEX in mind, so the experience is not the smoothest. There's a lot of glitches. There's a lot of glitches if you try to run multiple apps. And if you're someone like me, you might have Notion open, you might have Chrome tab open, and you might have YouTube open. That's a normal thing. Notion for the note taking, Chrome for the research, YouTube for the media it's gonna glitch out. You're gonna feel the glitch, even with awesome processor in this. My point is, if you're a very power using artist, get an iPad Pro. If you're a power user computer science major or some sort of software developer, get the Surface line of tablets. But if you aren't hyper intensive in a specific niche, you wanna enjoy your media, you wanna enjoy YouTube, you wanna video call friends, you wanna take notes for school, type essays, submit papers, then you will actually enjoy being able to switch between DEX and the productivity mode versus the tablet mode for entertainment. The reason I bring all of those other lines up like the Surface and the iPad Pro is because we're all talking thousand dollars here, right? These are a premium of the line tablets. This is a premium tablet. But Samsung is not going for the power users. This is the best tablet you can get if you're a casual user who's juggling, like I said, a lot of different tasks like note taking, but you're not specializing or power using it in one specific effort. So just keep that in mind. But that's it. That's really it. Aside from that, this tablet has been an absolute blast and I really have enjoyed it. And I think most people will enjoy it as well. I know now you can get it at a much cheaper price. So definitely look out for like really good deals because Samsung things, they do depreciate quite heavily. But if you are considering something else, maybe check out my last video on the iPad Pro. Maybe that's more up your alley, 12.9 inches, 11.8 or 11.6, I completely forgot. But I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. Make sure to have subscribed because there's a lot more awesome content coming out. We're going it out on a weekly basis. So you're gonna enjoy these things. You're gonna enjoy the cool finds and the long-term reviews. Until next time, take it easy, peace. <laughs> お面雪が参ります。危ないですから黄色い線路内側までお下がりください。